Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a deep dive into the EcoFlow Delta 3 Max Plus portable power station. This is EcoFlow's newest two kilowatt hour class power station, and it's designed for both home backup and serious camping and off-grid adventures. Uh, it's part of EcoFlow's Delta 3 product line, which includes multiple power stations for all your different needs. Uh, but it's a decent upgrade over the Delta 3 Max. It's got a couple extra features being expandability and increased power capacity, which you might find useful going to the plus from the Max. We're going to talk about both of those. So in this video, I want to focus on things that matter the most to me for my types of uses. And that includes camping and then overlanding and off-roading type uses. So some of those things that we're going to take a look at include powering camping devices like fridges and freezers. We're going to look at powering home essentials like your furnace and your fridge in the event of a power failure. Solar charging, the expandability because you can expand this unit. We're going to look at the build and the design of the unit itself. And then we're going to look at the app, which is one of the best apps on the market for portable power stations. So let's get into it. So let's take a look at the design of the unit first. Right off the top, everything about this unit feels premium and just looks top of the line. Um, the fit and finish of it, the textured top, everything just looks really nice with this EcoFlow unit. Um, it has two grab handles front and back so it makes it really easy to carry. The sides and the top are both kept clean. There's no ports or anything on the sides or top. Um, all of your inputs and outputs are either on the front or the back of the unit. So it just keeps everything clean, allows you to tuck it up against a wall um, or into the back of a vehicle, that kind of thing, and just sort of keep everything nice and tidy. So if we go over the front of the unit itself, we start with a really nice LCD display. It has all of your typical uh, information that you would typically find on a portable power station, including your uh, capacity percentage remaining, has your input and output uh, wattage, as well as an estimated time remaining based on your current loads. And then as we move down, three USB-C ports, which is really great. Um, we've taken away most of the USB-A ports on this. We've left one with an 18 watt USB-A, and then we have a 140 watt USB-C for all of your high powered USB-C devices, and then two 45 watt USB-Cs as well. Moving down to the AC outlets, we have four 20 amp AC outlets on the front of this. And the really nice feature with this Delta 3 Max Plus is that you can independently control each of these banks of AC outlets. So across the top here, we have an AC on power switch for one side and an AC on power switch for the second side. So what that allows you to do through the app is to prioritize which AC ports have a priority over the other. So in the event you had this in a um, sort of a home backup situation where maybe you had your fridge or freezer plugged into it, as well as some other non-essential items like maybe your router so that you had internet access if you had to evacuate your, your home. In the event that the power station battery dropped to a certain percentage, you could have it automatically turn off your non-priority outlets and just keep your priority outlets on. And that way your fridge or freezer or whatever item it is will last longer and get more capacity. Now moving around to the back, this is where you'll find all of the inputs for charging and a couple of DC outputs as well. So everything on the back is protected by these little flaps that fold down and then sort of tuck out of the way. So it's really nice for protecting the, uh, the inputs and outputs on the back. You will start at the top here. You have your AC input, and that's for the charging cable that it comes with, and you can charge up to 1800 watts with the AC input, and this will charge in about an hour. Uh, so it's really fast charging for a unit this size. As we move over, you have a little switch here that goes from fast charging to adjustable charging. And what you can do is on fast charging, it'll charge at the typical 1800 watts. But when we move it to adjust, then within the app, you can actually set the charging wattage that you want. Whether you want it low or high, up to the 1800 watts, you can set it to whatever you like within the app. And then over here, we have your two solar inputs. So you can charge with up to 1000 watts of solar uh, with two inputs for using multiple panels. Down below that is what makes this unique, one of the features that makes this unique over the Delta 3 Max, and that is an expansion port. And what this allows you to do is hook up expansion batteries that are available through EcoFlow. So I will be getting one of those and I'll have it for my update video, which I'll do in about a month or so. Um, but you can expand this up to 10 kilowatt hours. 
And that's something that's unique to this power station. So um, by having that port there, it just gives you a lot of option for down the road without having to buy different power stations. You can just expand the capability of this one here as your needs change. And then next to that is a 30 amp Anderson connector. This is also something that's unique to this power station over the standard max. And I'll tell you, if I had a power station like this when I did my trailer build, I may have changed how I did my build in the first place. Because having a 30 amp DC output on this power station would allow you, if you had a camper um, or an RV or trailer build, something like that where you had a lot of DC devices, you may have a DC power distribution block uh, in, that, in that setup. And this would allow you to power that distribution block up to 30 amps off of this DC output. So instead of only having your typical DC outputs on a power station being your USBs or your standard lighter outlet, this will allow you to power huge amounts of DC devices by using that Anderson port. So that's a really great feature on this power station. And then lastly, we have your standard 12 volt cigarette lighter uh, plug on the back here as well. So now that we've gone over all of that and looked at the design of the unit, Let's start trying it out with some devices and see what it can handle, uh, what the power capacity is, and just see what, it, what it'll do in a real world environment. Now we've moved out to the trailer and what I wanna make sure of is that this power station will power everything I have in the trailer here as far as my lights and AC accessories and outlets and that kind of thing. Uh, if you've watched my trailer build, I do have a lithium iron phosphate battery that's down in that cabinet and that will power me completely off grid. But in the event that I'm away for an extended period and that battery dies, I want to be able to plug in my power station so that the trailer then thinks I'm on shore power and run the trailer off of the power station. So right now you can see the extension cord is plugged in and that's plugged into my shore power outlet, which is on the outside of the trailer. And so right now the trailer thinks it's connected to the house or connected to shore power. So what I want to do is turn on my main lights in here so that's my my main led lights and you can see we've gone up to 218 watts on the uh, display there and then what i also want to check is i've got my fridge freezer in here my set power fridge freezer so i'm going to turn that on there we go so that's on now and as the uh, compressor kicks in We'll check back over here. So we're still at 218. Oh, it's just jumped up to 248. It surged up at 298 there, but no issues powering uh, these devices in here and anything else that I want to power uh, while I'm on AC power. If I was to turn off the lights in here, then we can see that that set power fridge right now is going to draw 51 watts. That's also something you need to keep in mind is we're running off AC now and not DC. If we were to run that fridge off of DC power, the lighter outlet that it comes with, um, it would be much more efficient. But at 50 watts here right now, you can see that it's telling me with 93% remaining, we'd get about 12 and a half hours of continuous runtime. Now, something you need to keep in mind with uh, fridge freezers, I'll just turn the lights on in here, um, something to keep in mind is fridge freezers don't run continuously. The compressor will kick in, it'll get the, the unit down to temperature, and then the compressor turns off. And then when the temperature begins to rise again, it turns the compressor back on. So you're running about 50% of the time, depending on your ambient temperature and where you have it. But if you were to bank on 50% of the time, if it's telling me that it would last at 12.4 hours with the load on right now, then at a 50% load or 50% on off time, you'd get over 24 hours, almost 25 hours of runtime. So a full day of uh, running a fridge freezer. So that's really great with that unit. So now I wanna talk about how you can use this unit in a home backup situation. So what I've done on my panel here is I have two transfer switches wired in. One is for my fridge circuit, that's my fridge in the kitchen, and the other is my furnace. To me, those are the two most important circuits in a power failure. I wanna be able to keep the fridge running to keep the food fresh, and I wanna be able to turn my heat on in my furnace to heat the house if the power goes out in the winter. 
So though anything else, lights and stuff like that, you can get away with flashlights or battery powered lights. Um, but for me to be hardwired in, those are the two most important circuits. So what I have here, these are easy generator switches. So right now you can see they're both in the off position. So right now my fridge, there's no power going to the fridge. Oh, and the way this works is you flip it down to normal and it'll run off your grid. That's for normal operation. And then in the event the power goes off, you flip it up to generator and it'll be powered by your power bank or your generator. So right now, everything's in the off position. So I'm going to flip the fridge to generator. And as the fridge turns on upstairs, we should see, there we go. So we see some draw now. It went up to almost 500 watts. And as the compressor kicks on and as the fridge sort of boots itself up, we'll see that that number change there. So it's settling around 150 watts right now, but that will go up as soon as the compressor turns on. And what I'm also going to do at the same time is I'm going to turn on the furnace circuit here. We'll flip that up to generator and we'll let the furnace kick on and we'll see. I can I hear the fan kicking on right now on the furnace up to 640 watts there for a second as both of these devices kick on. We'll see what sort of wattage we get. So both the fridge and the furnace have been running off the power station here for about five minutes and you can see the output has settled right in around 500 watts. And with that 500 watt draw, you can see at 90% capacity remaining on the battery, it's telling me it's gonna last about three hours. Uh, of continuous runtime. Now, in an emergency backup situation, we don't need these running continuously. You could run your furnace for 15 or 20 minutes and get the temperature in your house back up and then turn it off. And then once it starts to cool down again, then turn this back on, turn your furnace back on and you know get the heat back into the house. So we, we don't need it running continuously, but if we did, we would get three hours of continuous runtime between the fridge and the furnace. So. And again, in a home backup situation, because this unit is expandable, you could buy expansion packs, expansion batteries, up to whatever capacity you want, up to 10,000, up to 10 kilowatt hours. And then you have a whole home backup um, setup, as well as still keep the portability of just being able to take this unit with you when you want to go out and use it, sort of either camping or in an off-grid situation. So now what I want to do is sort of a max capacity test. This unit is rated at 3000 watts continuous. I have two 1500 watt space heaters here. So I'm going to see if it will run both of these at the same time. It's not uncommon that if you had a power failure in the winter, that you would want to run a space heater off of your power station. You know, that's going to be one of the main uses for it is to run heaters, um, furnace, that kind of thing. So let's turn both of these on. I'm going to turn them on one at a time. We'll watch the screen and see what happens. So turning on the first one here, I'll go straight to high. You see we're spiking up there, almost 1900 watts there to, is where it spiked up to. And it's settling down right in around 14, 1400 watts. Let's flip the other one on. We can also flip the second one on, spiking up to 25. Settling down around 20, around 2000 watts. But we'll just keep an eye on that for a second and see. Oh, there we are. Now the other one's kicked on with the heater. So almost 3000 watts, 2800 watts. And it's handling both of those, no problem. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the app control of this EcoFlow unit. EcoFlow's app is by far one of the best apps that I've seen, and it really gives you access to some really neat features that are exclusive to this unit. So you can see across the top here, we have your four different um, outputs. You have your AC outlets, your DC, as well as your expansion pack there. And then it gives you your charge status. So we see we have 90% remaining in the middle of the unit there. And then as we go down, we can see we can turn on our AC units, as well as our DC outlet on the back of the unit. And this can all be done uh, away from the unit as well. It connects to Wi-Fi, so it can be connected to your home Wi-Fi, and you can do this while you're away from home. Um, or if you're near the unit, then you can connect to Bluetooth and do it that way if you're camping and wanna connect to, to Bluetooth to check the status of it. So super easy to turn off all those outputs. And I won't go through all of the settings, but I'll just go through a few that I find really interesting. So as we scroll down here, 
You can see you have AC charging speed. That's where we talked earlier, where you can change that to whatever you like, as down as low as 200 watts and up as high as 1800 watts. And then going down, you have smart generator auto start stop. So this is compatible with EcoFlow's smart generators where the unit itself can trigger the generator to turn on and start charging the unit as the, uh, as the capacity drops, which is a really neat feature. You have X boost, which will enable it to go above the standard 300 watt capacity for shorter periods of time. So it'll give you up to, I believe it's 3,800 watts with the X boost for short periods. So that's a feature there. Uh, output port memory. What that will do is it will allow you to, it will, the unit will remember what ports you had on in the event the battery dies. So if you had this connected to solar, let's say, and overnight the unit died, in the morning when your solar kicked in and got some sun and charged the unit back up, it'll remember what ports were on and it'll turn those ports back on. As we go down, um, we can see we have storm guard where it'll actually monitor the weather for you and if it sees a storm coming within the next 12 hours it'll automatically charge the unit if you're connected to grid so lots of really cool features in the app here and a lot of control and uh, just a lot of really neat features that are on this ecoflow delta 3 max plus so after spending some time with the ecoflow delta 3 max plus here's my final take uh, this thing is an absolute powerhouse. It nails all the most important categories. Long run time, strong output, fast solar charging, UPS capability, expandable capacity, and one of the best apps in the game. If you want a portable power solution that works just as well on the campsite as it does during a home blackout, then the Delta 3 Max Plus is 100% worth considering. Let me know what appliances you want to see tested in a future video. I'm going to be doing a long-term follow-up video in about a month or so after I've put this through a little bit more of its paces and tested it out a little bit more. Um, so if there's anything that I didn't test out and you want to see sort of how it works, let me know. And as long as I have that device, uh, I'll, I'll definitely test it out. Um, but just know that this will power 99% of any home appliances you have in your house that plug into a standard AC wall outlet, either 15 or 20 amp. So anything you have, it shouldn't have any difficulty powering those devices. Um, also, depending when you're watching this video, if you're watching it near the time that I post it, coming up very soon is Black Friday and EcoFlow is gonna have its best prices of the year off on Black Friday. So check out the Delta 3 Max Plus if it's something that you're thinking about getting. This is gonna be your best time of the year to get it. I'll drop a link to it in the description. I'll also uh, put any discount codes and I'll update those as promotions change but definitely worth looking into. You'd be really happy with this unit. So I really appreciate you guys watching the video. Um, if you did like the video, please hit that like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, guys.